This video will discuss how stockholders' equity is reported and analyzed. As its name implies, retained earnings is net income that a company retains for use in the business. Net income increases retained earnings and a net loss decreases retained earnings. The balance in retained earnings is part of the stockholders' claim on the total assets of the corporation. A debit balance in retained earnings is identified as a deficit. If retained earnings has a debit balance instead of a credit balance, the company has not retained earnings, but rather accumulated a deficit. A company reports a deficit as a deduction in the stockholder's equity section of the balance sheet. The balance in retained earnings is generally available for dividend declarations. In some circumstances, there may be a restriction that makes a portion of the balance unavailable for dividends. Restrictions result from one or more of the following causes, legal, contractual, or voluntary restrictions. Companies generally disclose retained earnings restrictions in the notes to the financial statements, like the example you see here. In the stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet, companies report paid-in capital, retained earnings, accumulated other comprehensive income, as well as treasury stock. Within paid-in capital, two classifications are recognized. The first one is capital stock, which consists of preferred and common stock. Companies show preferred stock before common stock because of its preferential rights. They report information about the par value, shares authorized, shares issued, as well as shares outstanding for each class of stock. The second component is additional paid in capital, which includes the excess of amounts paid in over par or stated value. This slide does a fabulous job presenting the stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet. Remember, companies list preferred stock before common stock for both capital stock and additional paid-in capital. They also report information about shares authorized, issued, and outstanding for each class of stock. In this example, common stock indicates that 500,000 shares have been authorized, but only 400,000 shares have been issued. There are 390,000 shares outstanding. The difference between the shares issued and outstanding represents the 10,000 shares in Treasury. Make sure you take the time to understand how to solve this exercise. The solutions will be provided in another document. Investors are interested in both the company's dividend record, as well as its earnings performance. One way that companies reward stock investors for their investment is to pay them dividends. The payout ratio measures the percentage of earnings a company distributes in the form of cash dividends to common stockholders. The payout ratio is computed by dividing total cash dividends declared to common shareholders by net income. The payout ratio for Nike is 26.7% in 2016 and 27.2% in 2015. Nike's payout ratio was relatively constant at approximately 27%. Another way to measure corporate performance is through profitability. A widely used ratio that measures profitability from the common stockholders viewpoint is return on common stockholders equity. This ratio shows how many dollars of net income a company earned for each dollar of common stockholders equity. It is computed by dividing net income available to common stockholders, so we'll take net income but we'll subtract any preferred dividends and we'll divide that amount by the average common stockholders equity. Common stockholders equity is equal to the total stockholders equity minus any equity from preferred stock. Since Nike did not have any preferred dividends, return on common stockholders equity is computed by dividing net income by average common stockholders equity.
To find the average, we simply take the beginning plus the ending and divide by two. From 2015 to 2016, Nike's return on common stockholders' equity has increased. When obtaining long-term capital, managers must decide whether to issue bonds or to sell common stock. Bonds have three primary advantages relative to common stock. These advantages are shown in this slide. But keep in mind, debt is risky for a company because interest payments must be made even if the company has not earned sufficient income to pay them. Dividends, however, are always at the company's discretion and are not legally enforceable until they are declared by the board of directors. As a result, debt is considered riskier than equity. This slide shows that the return on common stockholders' equity is affected by the return on assets and the amount of leverage a company uses. If a company wants to increase its return on common stockholders' equity, it can either increase its return on assets or increase its reliance on debt financing. The solution to this exercise will be provided in another document.